What's going on everybody? Tom here with Black Sheep Keto and welcome to another recipe video just for you subscribers out there. And if you're not a subscriber yet, please consider doing so. Now today I am finally going to be releasing those keto crunchy snacks that I've been teasing in my vlogs forever. It just took a long time to perfect this recipe and if you look on this plate right here, you guys can see like all of the failed attempts. I actually had like three plates that size of failed attempts. So if you guys uh, want to do me a huge favor, hit that subscribe button, like this video, show your support for all the hard work that I put into these recipes, I would greatly appreciate it. Now to talk about the recipe. Now these are kind of an awesome keto crunchy bite. My goal was to have something that's, you know, keto macros, low calorie, and I can just sit there and munch on when I'm watching a movie or something similar to popcorn. So what I got are these little bites right here you see in the bowl, and I'm gonna show you guys how to make them. Now they are about half a gram each, which as you guys know, can't be that many calories in a single one. They're about 65% fat, and they take about 10 minutes to make and about 30 minutes to bake. Not too bad if you ask me. Now there is one piece of special equipment that you will need to get for this, but it's readily available and not too expensive. And there's one ingredient that you might not be able to find at your grocery store, but Amazon will have it to you in the next day. So if that sounds good to you guys, hang on tight and let's get right into the video. Welcome to this recipe for our delicious and new keto crunchies. Now this video is gonna be much like my bread video where I explain the science behind a little bit of what I'm doing because it's gonna save a lot of questions in the comment section. If you're not a big fan of that style of video, I am gonna go ahead and leave the written recipe and macros down in the description box. And as a note, as you see me adding some proteins and various things to this recipe, you're gonna notice that uh, it does end up being about 65% fat, so don't worry about it, we balance everything out. Now let's get going here. So the first ingredient going to this is 45 grams of a unflavored whey protein isolate. You can use pretty much any protein you want, but make sure it's unflavored. Right here, I do have 15 grams of an MCT oil powder. Using liquid MCT oil will result in it kind of flattening out and not staying as puffy as we want. So we are using a powdered MCT oil. Just double check that the one you're getting doesn't have a bunch of collagen or weird stuff in it. And this is also unflavored. Next up, this awesome looking orange stuff here is actually just powdered cheese. This from, comes from a company called Anthony. I get it off of Amazon. It usually gets here the next day. This might be the one ingredient where you have to order it and you won't be able to find locally. What's in here is basically just butter, whey, cheese. Um, there's something called annatto extract in which it's basically the thing that makes cheese orange. Um, so if you have buddies who are carnivore and you want to mess with them, just tell them that, that their cheddar cheese isn't actually carnivore because annatto extract comes from a plant. Also, only do that to your friends. Don't be rude to people on the internet. Now here we have one teaspoon of xanthan gum. This is to stabilize it while we're baking. Don't use guar gum. It's not stable under high temperatures. Then we've got one teaspoon of pink salt and one quarter teaspoon of cream of tartar. Now, if you guys have ever made a meringue, you'll know that cream of tartar is used to stabilize meringues. Um, same thing with heavy whipping cream. You can make a whipped cream and use cream of tartar to stabilize it under temperature. Same thing applies here. Now that is all of our dry ingredients. So I'm gonna grab a whisk real quick and just go ahead and beat this. Make sure that it's all well combined and uh, break up any of the big clumps you may see. Sometimes protein powder likes to clump a little bit. Now that looks great to me and you'll notice, like I said, there is some protein powder, some fat. This is nice and balanced. What I've done here is created a little bit of a well in the center and then we're going to add our wet ingredients. So for the wet ingredients, it's fairly simple. I have half a cup of egg whites. Now these are just boxed egg whites that I get from the store. It's much easier than trying to separate the egg whites yourself and the consistency is slightly different. So I do recommend you just get the box egg whites from the store, get a small box of it. You only need half a cup. And then right here we have half a cup again of heavy whipping cream. Now, since all of our liquid ingredients are kind of sitting in that well, just start mixing there and then slowly start to pull in from the sides. I find this to be the best way to mix it without getting clumps. And there you have it, our basic, I guess you wanna call it a dough, our liquid is mixed. You kinda of want this consistency where it'll drizzle and then disappear right away. If you followed the weights and measurements as I laid them out in this recipe, you should get to this consistency without a problem. Now I'll be right back. I'm gonna go ahead and grab that little piece of special equipment that we need and I'm gonna talk about it a little bit as we get going. 
So for that piece of special equipment that you can use all over the place and probably have never thought to buy, this is what is known as a whipped cream siphon. You can buy them on Amazon. The cheapest one I found is about $24. And if you can't wait, typically your local smoke shop will have these if you don't mind going into a smoke shop to purchase kitchen equipment. I'm not gonna explain why they're there. If you live in a place with as many degenerates as we have in Las Vegas, you probably already know. But that is where I got this one and it seems to work great. So all we're gonna need to do at this point is pour this liquid into our whipped cream siphon. As a note, this has been in my fridge overnight. You do want this nice and cold, as well as you want the ingredients in here to be nice and cold. So I'm gonna go ahead and fill this up and I'll catch up with you guys as soon as that's done. And I'm back. Now, as I mentioned, this can totally be used for making whipped cream, just a little bit of cream and stevia totally will uh, make you a nice keto whipped cream. There's a few cakes you can make in them, all sorts of fun stuff. But um, again, they're really cheap. I think the cheapest one I found was $24. So if you don't have one, it's really not a big deal. Everybody went out and bought a uh, mini waffle maker for chaffles. I think for making these awesome things, it's totally cool to buy one of these. Now moving on, we have one eight gram nitrous oxide charger or whipped cream charger. They call them all sorts of things, but it's basically just nitrous oxide, laughing gas, whatever. And then we're gonna have our little uh, top for it and a small dispenser. So what you're gonna do is just seal this up. Now, as a note, this is a 500 milliliter uh, container. If you have the one liter one, you can actually double the recipe and you'll need two of these. If you have the 250 milliliter one, uh, you might have to half the recipe and get a smaller charger, but this is an eight gram charger. So what we're gonna do is just go ahead and twist it on there. If you've never used one of these before, it's gonna make a loud hissing noise and you can unscrew it right away. There we go, all the gas is in there. Now this is really just allowing us to aerate the mixture without using any crazy leavening agents. And also um, there is some interesting science behind proteins and nitrous oxide. I'm not gonna explain it here, but it does help with the stabilization of this recipe. So go ahead and give this about five to 10 shakes. You'll feel the liquids inside of it stop uh, rattling around as much and kind of become more thuddy. That's what you're aiming for. You don't wanna shake it like a million times, but five to 10 should do the trick. And now we're done. Go ahead and screw that little nozzle on there. Now we're gonna go ahead and put this in the refrigerator for the time being while we heat our oven to 275 degrees Fahrenheit. If you have to do multiple, multiple batches, store this in the refrigerator, um, but before you use it again, leave it out for five to 10 minutes. As it gets too cold, this stuff will thicken up a lot and it won't wanna come out. Now I'm back here and I've got two cookie sheets lined with parchment paper. And then I also quickly wanted to show you guys the texture of the inside of one of them. Let me see if I can get the camera to focus here. Perfect, you guys see that? That is what they look like on the inside. And that is totally just a result of the nitrous oxide causing that kind of lift. Basically, it's gonna be a cross between like a whipped cream and a meringue that we bake for about 35 minutes, 30 to 35 minutes. Um, and it becomes a nice, hard, crunchy, almost pretzel-like texture. In any case, let's get going on this. So I have my whipped cream siphon here. It's been in the fridge while the oven was preheating. And we're just gonna make a bunch of little dots. They don't need to be that, uh, that far apart because they don't spread out. They stay pretty much upright. So you can fit a ton of them on this sheet. Now, if you've never used one of these before, you're basically just gonna hold it like this and pull the trigger with your finger. It does take a little bit of practice. So your first couple, maybe just trying a plate so you don't get these massive globs because those will take forever to bake. But once you have the hang of it, it's a pretty quick process. So as you can see, not all of mine are perfect and yours probably won't be either unless you're like an expert at using one of these things. Um, but they're good enough. Again, don't make them too huge, otherwise it's gonna take forever to bake, but around the size is perfect. Now I'm gonna go ahead and do this other tray. As a note, if you ever have issues getting some of it out here, just kind of give it a little thud like that to take the stuff from the top and get it towards the front. Now I'm gonna do this other tray. I'll catch up with you guys before we put them in the oven. And there you have it. It is totally done and ready to go into the oven. There is a little bit left in my siphon, so I might do a third tray here, but there's no sense putting that on camera. Now, it did take me about five minutes to squirt all of these down, and it took about five minutes to mix the ingredients plus the preheat time in the oven. So we're probably talking about 15 minutes total of time to make these. And then they're gonna bake at 275 degrees Fahrenheit for between 30 and 35 minutes. Depending on how big you made them, they could have to bake a little bit longer. Um, the best you can do is just snag one off the tray and squeeze it. If it's firm on all sides, then they're done. And worst case scenario, you pull them out a little bit early and the inside is slightly ready, but that's okay. You can leave them on the counter for a little bit and they'll firm up all the way. Or you can eat them as is because they're still delicious that way. So I'm gonna go ahead and get these in the oven and then I will catch up with you guys for the taste test. But in the meantime, check out the finished product and I'll see you in just a minute. So I just quickly wanted to jump back in here and show you guys what these things look like when they come out of the oven. And the best way to test them is just to kind of give them a squish. 
make sure that they're kind of firm on all sides. If they're not, they need to go in just a little bit longer. These ones are, so I'm gonna go ahead and pull them out. Now, uh, if they feel squishy or you pull them out too soon, it may feel a little bit bready inside. You've really got two options. You can put them back in there or you can just leave them out on the counter overnight and they will harden up a little bit. Um, for storage, I do wait till they're completely cool, put them in a bag and I store them at room temperature, but wait till they're cool first, otherwise the steam is going to make them soggy. Uh, one last little bit of safety note, please read the cards that come with these things, but before you open it, just make sure that it's completely out of gas, and then you can go ahead and open it up and clean it out. There will be just a little bit, hopefully you can see, maybe do that, hopefully you can see that, there'll be a little bit left in there, but it's really not worth doing too much else with. You can try to spoon it out and make a couple little more dollops, but it'll only make like two or three, so honestly, not worth my time. But with that, I am gonna go ahead and uh, transition over to the taste test. So I'll put the finished product on the screen right now and I'll catch up with you guys in just a minute for the taste test. Well, now that you guys have seen the recipe and the finished product, it is time for the taste test. Now, right here in this bowl is about 140 grams of them. That is about what you're gonna get out of a single batch. And like I said in the beginning, they weigh between half a gram and 0.6 grams each. So you are gonna get a ton of things that you can munch on. And at that weight, they really don't have that many calories in a single one. Now you can go ahead and scale that to whatever calories you have fit, but at 65% fat, I wish it was a little higher, but you can totally make these work in a keto diet. So without much further ado, let's go ahead and give it a taste. So I'm gonna grab one of these here and uh, hopefully the camera picks up on just how crunchy these things really are. Now these things are absolute perfection and I wanted it to be that way before I released them. I failed a ton at this guys and the finished product is absolutely great. It has this texture that's somewhere between a Cheeto and one of those like pretzel bites, those little hard pretzel bites you get. And the flavor is somewhere between a Cheeto and a Cheez-It, um, but you do get a little bit of that pretzeliness to it. So I think it actually, tastes exactly like kind of how I described the texture of them, which is absolutely perfect as well. Now again, you can totally add different flavorings to these things, make them however you want, but this is really just a base recipe. Throw a little bit of like, you know, red pepper in there if you want some spice to it, whatever you wanna do, these are absolutely perfect for just a large variety of snacks. And if you guys know me, you know that I miss things like potato chips, popcorn, that kind of stuff when I'm sitting there watching a movie. So I had to have something that was low calorie, crunchy, salty, just absolutely delicious, and these definitely fit the bill. So as always guys, the written recipe, macros, all of that stuff is going to be down in the description. If you like this video, leave it a like. If you have any questions, comments, anything like that for me, please leave them down in the comment section below. And if you have not done so, please hit that subscribe button, ring the bell, I really do appreciate it. So with that, show some love, and I will see you in the next one.